Read the Bible to preach tonight. I set it up on the table in front of my desk and read. Praise God. Hallelujah. After I get it over 20 inches from me, I can see it real good. Praise God. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart, and put away evil evil from thy flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. Praise God. Let us pray tonight and ask God to magnify himself in our midst tonight. Some of you are having some trouble in your home because the last two weeks I've been praying God draw this people in this church into righteousness and holiness. And some folks think that righteousness and holiness begins at the neckline and at the wrist and at the ankle. But I'm telling you that I know a lot of folks that's got that all right, but inside they're as wicked as they can be. They're not thinking anything right about the church and the people in the church. Amen. Fact is, it's so bad they put themselves down. Amen. But God is trying to draw us into righteousness and holiness, and righteousness and holiness is an attitude. You can't be holy with the wrong attitude. Amen. There are some people who can put on dresses, and you can always tell when a woman's going backwards and being rebellious. Instead of coming to church with her hair fixed, she's coming to church with her hair stringing. That's the first sign of rebellion in a woman. Amen. And I'm talking about one that's been converted. Not talking about somebody just coming. Praise God. And uh, when I get out to looking, God is trying to get some of us rapture ready. I just wonder if some of you ever stop to think God's tired of you carrying on like you are. I don't care how holy you can dress on the outside. If you can lie, you ain't holy. I don't care how holy you dress on the outside. If you're deceptive, you're not holy. I don't care how holy you dress on the outside. If you're jealous, you're not holy. Praise God. You can look ever so much holy on the outside. And the bad thing about that is you're deceiving yourself. You better start looking on the inside where holiness starts at. Praise God. I do believe that holiness is of the heart. I believe that. I don't believe it stops at the heart. I believe it starts at the heart. And then it creates the whole man. Praise God. The whole man. Amen. I don't believe a man can be holy and put his wife to work while he lazies around. Woo. That didn't go over so good. There's a spirit getting in this church of the men wanting to lazy around and put their wives to work. I'm telling you, Buster, that's against the word of God. Praise God. Praise God. The Bible said man don't provide for his house is denied the faith and worse than an infidel. Amen. Praise God. Say, but I'm hurt, brother elder, then let's get healed because we serve the healing God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I can't make excuses, fella. God's made provisions. Why should the prophet of God make excuses outside of the provisions God's made? Hello. Praise God. I'm not going to let the woman sit around and lazy around. When you come to me, she won't clean up her house. I expect her to clean up the house the same way I expect you to go to work. Praise God. Amen. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Hallelujah. Amen. What are you talking about, Brother Elder? Righteous living. Holy living. I'm saying again that holiness is an attitude. Praise God. Praise God. Holiness is in the spirit of the man. I want to be right in the sight of God. I want to take on my responsibilities. I want to take on my obligations. I want, I want in the eyes of God to say, I took care of my family right. I had girls that was mad at their mom this evening before they come to church, but they really wasn't mad at her. They was mad at me because I'm the one that caused all the fuss. Praise God. But you see, I'm the one that's going to run my house. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to run my house as God tells me to. And, and I'm going to tell you something. Uh, I'm going to tell them, hey, your attitude's wrong. And you you got a worse problem. Uh, you got a better problem than my girls has got. Because they don't only live with their daddy. They live with the pastor. Y'all lucky you don't live with him. Praise God. Because, cause see, your daddy can't look at you and say, you arguing with the pastor. Praise God. Amen. Amen. As far as I'm concerned, my girls are lucky they're raised in a preacher's home. Praise God. Amen. But I'm going to tell you something. It's an attitude. It's a spirit. And I want the right attitude. And I want the right spirit to get a hold of me. 
Hallelujah. I don't want to be shirking my responsibilities in the home. I went out there and bought that house with two acres to mow, an acre more than that. Wife, I'm going to show you when we get in. Praise God. Hallelujah. How much is it, brother? I'll guarantee you. She don't know what an acre is. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm going to have to show her what an acre is. Hallelujah. It's just two tenths less than two acres is what it is. It's 1.8 acres. Praise God. And, and I'll tell you what, on Monday morning, I'd love to get up of a morning and say, wife, what? Get the lawnmower and mow the lawn. Praise God. But she didn't cause me to buy that two acres of grass. And it ain't her responsibility to get out there and mow it. And it's not the church's either. Every time they help, though, I get happy. Brother Bill come out of prayer meeting last Monday and he said, what are you going to do today? I said, what do I do on Monday? He says, oh, uh, praise God. He said, can I come and help? I said, I feel bad about you coming and helping. He's helped me mow that grass for the last so many Mondays. I don't even which know which one he missed. Praise God. Hallelujah. And last week we did it all walk. Boy, it's a lots of fun walking. He's got to say walk. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. But you see, I'd love to wake up and say, wife, get out there and mow the lawn. Now, I've got a thousand reasons for her to mow the lawn. First of all, make her healthy. See, it'd make her lose weight. It just, oh, I can just find all kinds of reasons for her to mow the lawn. But it's not her responsibility. It's my responsibility. Praise God. I heard one of the girls mouthing off at their mother last night. And I said, hey, I've heard about enough around here. I just wonder how many wimpy men we got around here. You know, I'll let her take care of it. Ain't no use me getting involved. Hello, these girls are getting pretty good where they'd like to overpower their mother. Because if they can get power over their mother, they can do as they please. But there's one problem. There's a mean old man that lives in the house. Praise God. What are you talking about, Brother Elder? Your responsibility is what I'm talking about. Holiness is an attitude. Praise God. There's a lot of things we don't want to do, we got to do. Praise God. Amen. You should want to cover up. I, I told my girls they're going to wear longer sleeves. Fact is, I was going to do this Tuesday night, but it's just us home folks tonight. From now on, I don't want any female to come up on this platform for any reason. To sing, to testify, to sneeze, to cough, to choke, unless she's got three-quarter inch sleeves on her arms. You say, why are you changing, Brother Elder? Because I've been watching the sleeves in this church this summer creeping up and up and up and the females forgot where their elbows was they think their elbows about six or eight inches above that joint right there so since they can't tell where it's at i'm going to help them find out how to dress to come up here because i'm going to tell you something whether you like this or not this is the holiest place in this city and if you can't represent this place as the holiest place in this city i'm going to help you do it i tell you what I'd do. If I was a female, I'd be afraid to come up here on this platform dressed like the pastor told me not to dress. <laughs> What's wrong with the men? So far, I ain't seen one of them that comes up here without long sleeve shirts on. And the first man tries to get on this platform in a t-shirt's going to get shoved out there in the pew in front of everybody. Praise God, this is a holy place. And we're going to keep this place holy. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the closest place to God in this city. It's a privilege to get on this platform. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. What are you saying, Brother Elder? I'm telling you what I'm saying. I'm saying holiness is an attitude. Praise God. Holiness is in your spirit. Praise God. You're either holy on the inside or you're not holy on the inside. And you can dress holy on the outside and be a devil on the inside. You can chew people out on the parking lot and call them names. I've heard several people make statements recently that people coming to this church claim to be saved. They've heard them cuss. I'd like to know how in the world do you cuss and be saved. I said I'd like to know how do you cuss and be saved. Bitter and sweet water don't come out of the same fountain. Because what are you saying? I, I ain't even preaching what I thought I was going to preach tonight. The fact is I haven't got started on it yet. Hallelujah. But I'm going to tell you one thing. Holiness is an attitude. Holiness is your spirit. If your attitude's wrong, you, you might dress holy, but you come to church like, I'm in bondage and I can't help. It. Hello. Hello. Praise God. I'm not in no bondage tonight. I love the way I'm dressed tonight. I thank God he set me free. I said he set me free. I don't miss none of the dress of the world. And, and this has been a cool summer.
fact, is the coolest one I ever remember in Hutchison. Praise God. And the world takes their clothes off. Man, I, I mean, the other day, it was chilly. And some of us men go over there to uh, to the quick shop after 7 o'clock prayer meeting of a morning. Some of us go there around 10 to 8 or 8 o'clock and have some coffee. A and I looked over at that thing on the bank, and it said 66 degrees. And I thought, man, that feels good this morning. Nice and chilly, just like I like it in the morning. And I looked, and here come this woman in in short shorts. Praise God. I know she wasn't wearing them to be cool because it was cool enough. Praise God. Amen. What are you talking about, Brother Elder? An attitude, a spirit. A spirit and an attitude that can get on you in the church. I had a preacher that asked me something tonight on the telephone said, what on God's name's happening, Brother Elder? I said, the spirit of the age is trying to come in the church. We're not being cool. We're being rebellious. Hello? Let me tell you something, young person. You better read this verse. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. Just walk any way you want to, and just do anything you please, and live like you think you're supposed to live. And don't pay any attention to the man of God, and don't pay any attention to the older people. But you remember this. For all this, God's going to bring you into judgment. Praise God. Let me tell you something. When you're young, the only thing you can do is pay attention to the older generation. Some of you don't know that we made the same mistakes you're making. My God, what a terrible price I paid for being rebellious. I put my son in a grave. Let me tell you, it ain't funny. Praise God. I'm going to tell you, it ain't paid off for the rebellious times I lived. There's a lot of things I'm still paying for that'll be a secret to my dying day in my grave, but I'm still paying for them. I heard a man say, say to his backslidden daughter this morning, there's things your fathers did in his life that I have a hard time forgiving myself for. And honey, you got to forgive yourself. Jesus has already forgave you. It's you that won't forgive yourself. What are you talking about? I'm telling you what. It does make a difference how you live this morning. It does make a difference whether you pay attention. Your attitude does make a difference when the man of God's preaching. Your spirit does make a difference when the man of God's preaching. Uh, amen. Huh? If you go home and have a fit in front of your children, you better know you're fixing to pay a big bill. I could preach on all kind of people in this church that's been in this church and went home and had a fit in front of their children and their lives today is a disaster. I don't have to. Some of you older saints been around seeing what happened. Maybe some of you older saints ought to tell some of these younger saints about that. Maybe they won't just think I'm up here blowing hot air all the time. Praise God. I'm going to tell you something. I was thinking this morning of a, a, a judgment that fell on somebody and I said, oh my God. I, I really didn't want that to happen to him. I really didn't want that to happen to him. But I'd forgotten about something. There They've been running me down. They've been mouthing me down. I wanted to see that man come back in this church. I wanted to see him repent. I wanted to see him be restored. I wanted to see him be filled with the Holy Ghost. But tonight he's dead. Amen. What are you talking about, Brother Elder? I'm telling you, God is seeing all these things tonight, church. It's time we pay attention. He said to this generation and this, this man, uh, he wasn't even living right with God himself, the one that wrote this, young man, thy youth and thy heart, cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of your heart. If you walk in the ways of your heart, you'll do every ungodly, unimaginable thing you can think of. Because the heart is desperately wicked, and who can know it? We better not walk according to our heart. We better walk according to the commandments of God. We better walk in the Spirit. We better walk in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise God. I can't lie, but what it hurts me. I can't, I can't cheat a saint, but what it hurts me. I'd rather be cheated than cheat somebody else. I've been taken advantage of so many times it ain't fun. Praise God. In the world and in the church too. Fact is, my dad knew something I never even. My dad said something tonight about me and my brother. I said, I don't want to talk about my brother. I don't know nothing about him. I don't know nothing bad about him. And my dad said, well, that's good. Praise God. He said, you built that room. I said, I don't even want to talk about dad. I don't have nothing in my heart against my brother. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. I, I don't care. There ain't no room we're going to hell over. There, there ain't no roof we're going to hell over. There ain't, there ain't nobody. But my God, people say, things about my kids even in this church enough to make me so mad to go bust somebody in the mouth but I got over it and I prayed through over it. hallelujah and, and I don't hold it against them fact is thank God I can't even remember hallelujah amen my wife and I were getting really blessed we can't remember nothing I said honey you know where it's at no I can't remember what you did with me I didn't have it praise God 
It's getting to be fun to live in our house. Nobody knows anything about anybody the last time somebody did something. Or where we at or where we put it at. Praise God. Hallelujah. Some of you grinning, you know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. You say, oh, I hope that don't ever happen to me. I'm sure it won't. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, I'm, what are you talking about, Brother Elder? I'm talking about our attitude. I'm talking about our spirit. We say we're holiness people. Are we really? Are we just holiness in the camera? Are we just holiness in the mirror? Or are we really holiness people? Praise God. God, give me a forgiven spirit. I'm telling you, there's a lot of people in Pentecost today that could be saved if they could forgive. Hello? I preached on a forgiven spirit around here a few weeks ago, and it ain't worked on some folks. How do you know, Brother Elder? They called me up, and they said this, and they said that. And you know what? I know they ain't forgave nothing. They can remember every ungodly, wicked thing that ever happened. I remember when my husband, 17 years ago, you know what? It's funny how some of you can drag stuff out from under the blood. Amen. I wonder why we can't put it under the blood and leave it under the blood. Praise God. You say, well, why can't we put it under the blood and leave it under the blood, Brother Elder? Because we don't have a forgiven spirit. If we had a forgiven spirit, we wouldn't drag it out. Whew. What do you? Somebody say, I want you to preach on holiness. I am preaching on holiness. <laughs> Praise God. I heard a man praying in this church several times this week. God, take a lying spirit out of me. And so I started helping him pray. That's it, God. Take that lying spirit out of him. Praise God. I used to have one. It's a devil and I have to deal with. Praise God. Well, I ain't going to pray out loud. Somebody find out what's in me. We're going to find out anyhow. <laughs> you just wait. It's going to be such a big devil in you pretty soon. You can't hide it. Praise God. You'd be better off if you was in this altar crying out for help. Praying, God, get it out of me. God, make me holy. God, make me righteous. God, make me clean. You'd be ten times better off down here in this altar hollering and the saints are helping you pray and you would hide in that devil in your closet till it's so big he comes walking out and everybody sees it. Praise God. My God, I thought I wonder what I'm going to preach tonight. Hallelujah. I guess I know what I'm preaching now. I'm on something I can't get off that trail. I've had dogs that got on trail, and I said, that see dog in my go out here and drag her off that trail. That's the way I feel right now. Man, I can't get off this trail. But I'll tell you one thing, I ain't running a cold one. I've got a hot one. I've seen two or three foxes coming out of their hide. Praise God, just since I've been preaching. Amen. I'm telling you something. Next time you go home, you say, I wish Brother Elder preached on holiness. Just take an attitude test. Just take a spirit test. See what your attitude's like. See what your spirit's like. See if it's holy and godly in the sight of Jesus Christ. If you want to offend one of your brothers in the church, you don't have a Holy Spirit. If you've got a score to settle in here, you ain't got a Holy Spirit. You don't settle a score in the church. The Bible said go to your brother and repent. That's the spirit of the world. What's it doing in the church? Oh, get Hallelujah. Oh, man, you think it's Thursday night, wouldn't you? Go ahead. And just live unto your own heart. Do that which is right in your own sight. Somebody said to me on the phone tonight, said, well, we're all free Americans. We can do as we please. I said, yeah, that's what every American's doing. I said, they're doing everything that's right in their own sight. Ain't we a wonderful united country anymore? United we stand, divided we fall. I wonder where we're going at. You know what this ex? You want, you want to really know what this election's all about? I'm going to tell you what this election's all about. This election's against abortion and and for abortion. That's what it's about. This election's against queers and for queers. That's what it's about. You vote for Clinton, you're for queers. You vote for Bush, you're against queers. You vote for Clinton, you're for abortion. You vote for Bush, you're against abortion. That's what this whole election's about. And you say, well, I don't believe that, brother. That's good. You, you're a free American. Believe whatever you want to. But I'm going to tell you something. You better wake up and find out something. That this country is split right down the middle. And united we stand and divided we fall. And if I were you, I'd get that spirit of the world off of me. And I, you go out there and work with them every day. And the next thing you know, you come home. Did you ever notice when you come home from work, you're treating your wife wrong. And all of a sudden you're saying, I wonder why I'm doing this. You know what's happened? You drug a spirit out of the factory home with you. Hello. 
I don't know why women jump all over their husband when he comes in, because they're not supposed to be watching soap operas. The one thing about it, when I've been working my fool head off on the roof, I come home and I look like uh, I ain't had a bath for six weeks. I never figured it out. She meets me at the door smiling from ear to ear. I should work like that every day. Praise God. Got supper ready and telling me what a sweet old man I am. Praise God. Somebody said, well, that's the way a woman should do it. I believe that, but women don't. Well, if you had to fool around with these kids all day like I did. That's a joke. Two or three months out of the year. The rest of the time, the teacher wrestles them all day long. Amen. We got into, you know what happens in the Midwest? Oh, Sadie comes over. Thank God she don't come to church here in the morning talk now. There he is, God. And she starts talking about how bad it is in the neighborhood and how bad this is and how bad that is. And you sit there and suck coffee down. Daddy, daddy. And she leaves and goes home and she leaves a nasty, ugly, dirty, rotten spirit in your house that's there all day long. And when your husband comes in this dirty, rotten world and look what's rotten in this world. That dirty, rotten spirit's on you. That's some sinner person's drug in your house. What are you talking about, Brother Elder? I'm talking about a spirit of holiness, a spirit of righteousness. I've been praying for two weeks at 7 o'clock in the morning. God lit a spirit of righteousness and a spirit of holiness. Come on, these people in this church. There's a terrible spirit that's got a hold of the people in this church. I'm not preaching no canned sermon tonight. I'm preaching something that ought to get you on your face before God searching out your soul saying, God, if I'm part of the problem, clean me up, wash me up. I don't want to run in my own way and in my own heart. Hallelujah. I'll tell you one thing. God's coming after a people that's not got a spot or a wrinkle in them. And he's coming after a bride that made herself ready. I'm going to tell you, we're going to have to make ourselves not get ugly. We're going to have to make ourselves treat one another right. We're going to have to make ourselves have the right attitude and spirit. It's not in us to have the right attitude and spirit. Brother Bill was with me the other day. You know where I'm going. I'm going to work you over, brother, till you get prayed through. We pulled up to a stoplight. He said, it looks like the sons of silence, Brother Elder. They didn't look to me like they'd be too silent, but they sure did look ugly, mean, smelly. One, if you think I'm fat, you should have seen that one on that motorcycle. It looked like he was riding a mosquito. Praise God. It took a Harley Davidson to carry him down the road. Praise God. And I was looking at that dude. That dude had a bush on him that hung clear down to his knees. I was wondering how he kept it from getting it caught in a sprocket. Hallelujah. Praise God. And sitting at that red light and turn green, both sides. But these guys so dumb and doped up and stuff, they don't know that lights turn green on both sides. So I took off. And I was looking at that big fat one thinking, man, he is a whopper. I don't know how he keeps all that out of the motorcycle. Praise God. And I looked up and one of them had split off and was right in front of the grill of my truck and I was pushing on the gas. And I said, oh my, plan I hit the embrace. And that dude was giving me the finger and he was giving me this and he was yelling this at me and yelling that at me. And Brother Bill needed a good case of the Holy Ghost. We rode down the street for a little bit and I looked at him and he was getting about the color of some of the pews in here and he was saying in a nice way, take me back. When all of a sudden I started singing, oh precious is the flow that washed me whiter than snow. No other fountain I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. I didn't need no fight with a motorcycle. Can't you just see me out there calling that dude all kinds of names and fist fighting and the rapture takes place. Amen. Can't you just see me carrying on and I dust myself off and go into the quick shop and tell them how they ought to get right and ready for the rapture. Huh? Praise God. Hey, are we holy? Are we holy? Are we righteous? Would our neighbor convict us over holiness? Or would the neighbor say, you ought to hear how they cuss over there at night when they get mad at each other. Tell how he beats her up. This ain't Sunday night. I don't know what night this is, but anyhow, we're having it. Do you believe in holiness? What kind of holiness do you believe in? Huh? What kind of righteousness do you believe in? Well, we're all human. Yeah. And you know what's going to happen to the humans? They're going to wind up in the lake of fire. But I'm going to tell you something about the born again. The one that's got a brand new attitude. The one that's got a brand new spirit. The one that's been washed in the blood of the Lamb. The one that don't act like they used to act. Amen. I said the ones that don't act like they used to act. The ones that's been changed. 
They're going up. They're getting out of here. Praise God. I don't believe you're holy at church and a devil at home. And I know some of you got some troubles here and some of you say, well, I must not be saved. Man. Well, praise God. You need to find out so you can get to the altar and get prayed through. Not throw up your hands and walk out. I used to act like a jerk when I was younger. And I go to bed and go to sleep. Try to. My Holy Ghost started talking. I used to get mad and beat my kids because they bothered me. Not because they was doing something wrong. Because they was bothering me. You know what stopped me from doing that? God. God started talking to me. God asked me, were you right? You know what changed me? God changed me. Hallelujah. And I started spanking my children because they done something they shouldn't have done. Instead of because they just aggravating me. Man, if you beat something up because it's aggravating you, you'd be beating something up all day long. I told my wife, I said, I've got to get out of bed. She said, why? I said, I'm going out there and kill that dog. I walked around the bedroom a few times, said it's close to hunt season. I fed her all year. Oh, God. Last night, she got me closer to loading that 22 up, going out there and see how many holes I could drill in that dog. Yeah. She didn't quit barking for four or five hours. I went out there, beat her, beat the pen and everything else. And as soon as I got away, she started up again. And I finally looked at my wife. I said, I got to kill her. But I prayed through. I laid there till either I wore her out or she wore me out because I fell asleep. Praise God. My wife says, can I turn the fan on? I said, turn the fan on. Turn the radio on. Turn whatever you want on. Something so I can't hear that dog no more. Praise God. Hallelujah. What are you saying, Brother Elder? If we just beat up on things because they're aggravating us, we'll have something to beat up all the time. Amen. I've seen people get out, slam the door of their car. I don't know how they can do it without going to the hospital. Walk over and kick the door so hard they put a great big thing in it. Turn around and look at that sorry car I hate. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Praise God. Any of you ever felt like kicking your bunch of hypocrites? You better believe I felt like kicking mine. I've even told some folk pray for me. They said, why is that? I think I'm going to get a hammer and beat this thing up. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. How many of you believe we got to be saved? If we're going to be saved, you think we have to act like we're saved? Speak like we're saved? Walk like we're saved? Talk like we're saved? Everywhere? At the grocery store? In the barber shop? At Walmart. You only preach about Walmart in this church because that's where everybody goes. Ain't no use to preach or going to Walmart if you don't want to be seen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I went to Walmart about a week or so ago with my wife and five, six women in there. Boy, they was big, big too. Every one of them had arm wrestle, y'all guarantee. And they was telling them kids how it was, when it was, and how it happened. And they sound like men. And I thought, man, that man's pretty tough. And I turned around and, buddy, it wasn't no man. It was one more woman. Praise God. I heard one clear down the aisle giving it to a kid. Thought, Boy. I walked down there, and it was another humongous woman. Praise God. No, I'm not talking about you big women in this church. They make you look little. Praise God. I mean, these women look like there wasn't nothing to mess with. Amen. Walk like a man. Talk like a man. Beat you up like a man. Whatever that is. Hallelujah. I don't think we ought to act like that in stores. And I don't know why I'm on all this on Sunday night. Boy, I don't ever remember doing this on Sunday night. I don't blame my wife. She's reading a songbook. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. She's got her work cut out for her. She's trying to find a song that goes along with this. Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to tell you something, saints. I'm worried. I've laid in bed all afternoon, God. How does this fit in a holiness church? It's affected our worship tonight. A lot of folks didn't worship tonight because of your attitude. That choir couldn't sing any better than it sung tonight. But it's almost like it didn't sing at all. Bible said, quench not the spirit. But I'll tell you what, some of us ain't even quenching the spirit. Some of us ain't even responding to the spirit. We're not responding because we feel bad in ourselves. We've known in a lot of places we didn't please God. Is it time to quit? Is it time to run out? Is it time to give up? No. It's time to change. It's time to run to the altar. It's time to say, forgive me, God, and change my attitude and my spirit. Praise God. There's no place in quitting and giving up. Where are you going to? What are you going to run to? Hallelujah. I'm going to run to the rock that's higher than I am. Hallelujah. That's what I'm going to do. Praise God. I'm going to fall on the rock and be broken rather than have the rock fall on me and grind me to powder. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. It's time to fall on the rock and be broken and say, God, let a holiness spirit get a hold of me. Lord God, i got to be holy on the inside as well as the outside. 
Well, I'm on this. I'm going to tell everybody in this church something. I've heard women talking about divorces in this church. And I'm going to tell you something. Divorce does not belong in an apostolic church. You do not divorce an apostolic husband, and you do not divorce an apostolic wife. It don't belong in an apostolic church. It's unbiblical. It's not the Bible. It's against the Bible. I tell you what you do, you get in an altar and you get with your husband and you get with your wife uh, and you pray through and you get things straightened out uh, and you get your attitude straightened out and you get your spirit straightened out. I don't like that, Brother Elder. I don't imagine you do. No flesh likes to be told what to do. But I'll tell you, if you want to go to heaven, you like it. I said, if you want to go to heaven, you like it. I'm going to say it again. If you want to go to heaven, you like it. If you want to be the holiness person you say you are, you like it. You're splitting your testimony all to pieces. How in the world can you go out and say what the Lord's done for you and have a divorce? You've, you've made yourself a fool in the eyes of sinners. You made yourself just like they are, powerless without a God that can help you. And I'm going to tell you what I heard my mother say the other day, and it's the truth. Ain't nobody ever had a divorce, but what their life didn't get worse. Divorces don't settle nothing. Divorces creates bigger problems. It makes children resent parents. Hello, hello, hello. Getting all quenchy tight in here. What are you preaching on? The spirit of the age, the spirit of the world. The spirit of the age says I will shack up. The spirit of the age said I will just have a divorce. We can't work this out. I'm going to tell you you something that's a lie from the pits of hell i'm gonna tell you my wife and i have had 47 times we could have had a divorce at least that many times we could have had a divorce yeah about once a year but she can't stand me I, huh? okay, times I can't stand oh we don't have that at our house you are I've, heard women say, I'd like to I've heard men say i'd like to ship her off ten bucks too. i don't know what it is it just gets in a marriage sometimes it's hard to live with each other that's a fact you can't live with them and you can't live without them you know how i know because when they get untied they can't stay untied but they ain't got enough sense to figure it out for they get untied. Then they make it a bigger mess. Running around unmarried. Trying to live for God. Ooh, why? What are you preaching on, Brother Elder? Holiness. Holiness. How the world's watching us. Is our God bigger than their God? Or is he not bigger than their God? Hello? And there ain't some folks in here liking this. And you know something? I didn't even ask them if they like this or not. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to tell you something. Holiness is really Holiness. Do I look holy from outside of my house? Or do I just look holy in my own eyes? How does my neighbor size me up with holiness? How does my banker size me up with holiness? My banker looked at my daughter because a lot of young kids are messing up parents today. My daughter, my banker looked at my daughter and he said, I'm going to tell you one thing, young lady. You're lucky your daddy's got credit like this. You better keep your bills paid on time. I believe she will. If I didn't, I wouldn't have signed for her. But she needed to hear that from the bank. And I needed to hear it from the bank. Why is that, Brother Elder? How's the banker look at you with holiness? Praise God. <laughs> Woo, it's getting squeaky tight in here. Hey Amen. Telling you something, bless God. It means something to be right. It means something to be right. Live right. Live holy before God. Live clean in your spirit, in your mind. Praise God. Well, we've had a lot of terrible things happen to us. Let me ask you something. Have you ever went and sit down and looked at the terrible things that's happened to you and considered what you did that caused them to happen to you and say, I'm changing. God, I'm changing. Some of you just tuned me out in the last five minutes. But I'm going to tell you something. You better get me tuned back in. You better get down here and say, God, I'm changing. I'm changing, God. I want to look at me like you look at me. I wonder how many of you want to look at yourself like God looks at you. Just exactly like God's looking at you. What are you talking about, Brother Elder? I'm talking about the rapture taking place. I'm talking about Jesus looking at me just like I am. My God, come on, Sister Elder. I don't know what song we're going to sing that goes with this. Praise God. I didn't even preach what I was going to preach tonight. I was going to preach life after life. Maybe that's what I did. Because there is a life after this life. But he said, but know thou that for all these things, God will bring thee into judgment. Now, you, now, now, you say, Brother Elder, why did you preach all them things you preached tonight? Listen, therefore, remove sorrow from your heart. If you don't change, if you don't change. You hear me? I said, if you don't change, sorrow's coming your way like you've never dreamed of. If you don't change. 
Put sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh. You know, a lot of times when we're in sorrow, we only get a mind to get even with something, which makes us even more evil than what we was. I've watched women, men take advantage of women when they divorce them. I know of a man that's sitting a woman up to divorce her right now, and she loves him and she don't want him to divorce her. And man, he's just setting her up to take everything that she's got coming to her away from. What she don't know is a long time ago, he quit loving her, and she's still loving something that don't love her no more. But you know something? When a woman sees that happen and it finally comes home, boy, if she's not saved, there's nothing like a woman's scorn and a woman's hatred. That's what the Bible says. I'm telling you what, if we don't get these things out of us now, they're later coming back. I remember a preacher one time preached when your chickens come home to roost. A lot of you don't know about that, but them old Arkansas do. Them old chickens used to disappear in the daytime. I don't know where they went all through the woods grubbing worms and stuff, but you could go out that hen house 30 minutes before dark, and they'd all of them be sitting on them sticks all the way across through there, just looking at you. Every chicken you thought you got rid of, be sitting in there just looking at you. He preached when your chickens come home to roost. I'm telling you something, there's some things we better get out of our lives. I read a scripture tonight, and it's working me over. You see, a lot of you don't know what I know. You know, Sister Carrick, this church doesn't realize that in 10 years from now, I'll be 63 years old, and they don't know how fast 10 years